Oklahoma, the Red River Showdown. Saturday, it's going to be a good one. I got a lot of notes here with a lot of stuff to talk about today. This could be, this will be a longer video than usual. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give a lot. I'm going to give past performances of the year, uh, some history, some individual performances from guys this year and from just team perspectives. And then future implications, obviously, of this game for both teams. Uh, this weekend, no videos will be made. I will be out. Um, busy, will not be able to make videos, so no Big 12 preview, no NASCAR preview, I'm sorry. I'll do my normal power rankings and race recap later this week, uh, Sunday night, Monday, but yeah, I will not be able to make videos Friday or Saturday and early Sunday morning. So yeah, let's just jump into it. So, we've actually got a really interesting matchup here. You've got Oklahoma 5 and 0 with two wins in conference and you got Texas 4 and 1 with two wins in conference. With both teams obviously zero losses in conference. Well, obviously Oklahoma Texas their one loss was to Maryland, which I'll talk about later. Just some history of the series. The last time the two teams were ranked and were playing each other was 2012 in college game day at the State Fair of Texas for the first time since 2011. Both those instances resulted in an Oklahoma victory by a lot of points. In 2011, 55 to 17. In 2012, it was 63 to 21. So the last two times, they've been in big stage, good in that stuff. You know, Oklahoma's really destroyed Texas. But since 2013, it's changed. Texas in 2013, underdogs, unranked, they won by 16 points. 2014, Texas underdog, only lost by five. I think they were a big underdog too, I think. 2015, I don't even know how, but sometime, somehow that team won. Like, that was a terrible team. They just lost 50-7 to to TCU. They were 1-4. Blowout loss to Notre Dame, TCU. You get the story. They somehow won that game. In 2016, uh, it was a little closer of a matchup. Uh, Oklahoma was 20th, Texas unranked, both defenses were terrible, finals 45-40 Oklahoma, and then last year obviously Oklahoma coming off a loss to Iowa State, Texas was 3-2, and two. so that was a five point game. So in the last five years since 2013, the margin if you add them all up, Texas is actually a plus eight with only two of those five wins, but still that's just a little history debriefing on you, for you. 2011-2012 uh, bloods towards Oklahoma last time they really mattered. 2013 through 2017 when they were supposed to be Oklahoma wins by a lot. Texas played them tougher. So it's a rivalry game. Anything could happen. Oklahoma could go out there and win 70-0. Texas could go out there and win 40-10. Uh, they could go out there and play a hard-fought game and it only uh, end up being 7-3 or something. It could end up being 56 to 52. I don't know. It could be crazy. We don't know what's going to happen. It's a rivalry game. New guys could step up. Legends are made in this game, as they say. So it's going to be a big deal what happens in this game. So that leads into future implications. Um, the Big 12 could lean on this game. Both teams have yet to play West Virginia. Texas has West Virginia at home. Oklahoma has West Virginia on the road. So if Texas can win here and beat West Virginia and win out through the conference, then the Big 12 championship, obviously. If Oklahoma were to win this game and they go on and lose to West Virginia and Texas after this game wins out, Oklahoma has the tiebreaker. If they were to tie, if there was a three-way tie, Oklahoma would have the tiebreaker and be in. So this game could be a big deal for future implications for the Big 12, not only that, but for the playoff. Oklahoma really be, being the only team given a shot at the playoff right now. 5-0, uh, and o, pretty powerful offense. And so if they could really, they could win out, obviously they'd have a good shot at the playoff after last year uh, being repeat playoff contenders. So it's a big deal for that. And this is another big question. Is Texas back? I think this game determines it. Uh, Texas can go out there, fight, keep it close. I think they might be back. If they win, I think they're back. So I think this is a big deal. And something else that's been big for Texas recently that they couldn't do last year is they can close out games. Last year they played at USC. 
Uh, they were up 17 to 10 with 40 seconds left. They just had to hold Darnold like they'd been doing all night. And they let him drive down the field, get a game time field goal, and they lost in double overtime. Uh, Oklahoma game, the Oklahoma game. They were down 20 0. They rallied back. They took the 24 23 lead. And then blown coverage gave a wide open Mark Andrews a go ahead touchdown. And Oklahoma was able to win that game due to that. And then obviously the Oklahoma State game, Ellinger threw a dumb interception in overtime. Uh, so they they just weren't it was tough for them to close out games last year this year they've been able to close out these games uh, against USC they were down 14 to 3 in the first quarter they were able to get it back close 16 14 at half not only were they able to close out that game they were able to dominate they just pushed down on the accelerator and they just blew past USC ended up winning that thing 37 14 and then against TCU, it was a close game. TCU was up 16-10 at one point, and Texas ended up scoring three touchdowns and putting TCU away. And then Kansas State, they almost blew it, but they were able to hold on as the offense was able to run off the clock at the end. So I think that's a little bit of confidence for Texas that they have going into this game that they desperately needed and that they are going to need that. They're going to need the confidence that they can close out these games. Last year, I don't think they had the confidence because they weren't winning as much. This year, they're closing out games, and they're winning, and I think that's a big deal for a team like this that just needs some confidence to go on to the future. And then Oklahoma. Oklahoma really hasn't played any great teams this year. Florida Atlantic, they're not really a good team against these Power Fives. UCLA, they are terrible. They're 0-4 in their first year under Chip Kelly. They've played awful, awful. At Iowa State, they honestly struggled a little bit there. It was a road game. But it was a revenge game, so... And then Army, you know, you're never going to see that offense again. It's fine. You, the Army had the ball 46 minutes, so... Struggle for Oklahoma there. And then last week, home against Baylor. So this is the biggest test that Oklahoma has had so far. This is definitely going to be the best defense they've seen. Texas is, has a top 25 defense. And Oklahoma has probably one of the best offenses in college football. So that's going to be a matchup that's going to be very interesting. And to see as this game progresses. But I think if Oklahoma can win this, they can put, hey, we're for real. We're playoff contenders. If they can win this game, they are making a statement that, hey, we got this. Uh, we are in it, and we don't just beat crap teams. We are going to beat this team that is on a hot streak. If we can end a hot streak, we can do it to anyone. We can beat anyone. We can win at West Virginia. We can win the Big 12. We can make it into the playoffs. So, Confidence for Texas and then Oklahoma making a statement with a very big win against their rival. So I think it'll be a big deal for this game. So yeah, let's get into the individual performances. Another thing that could affect the game, obviously. Uh, as I said, o with Oklahoma's weak schedule, that could hurt them. But Texas did still lose to Maryland. Maryland's not that great. They got blown out by Temple. So that if that team shows up, it's going to be bad for Texas. Oklahoma's going to destroy them. So hopefully that team doesn't show up. And we'll get a good game. But I got the quarterbacks first. So Kyler Murray, obviously a Heisman favorite. Uh, he's had big numbers this year. He has pff, a ton of yards. 14, 1,460 yards this year. 17 touchdowns to two interceptions. That's incredible. And with Murray trying to make Oklahoma back-to-back -back Heisman winners with Mayfield last year, this year it being Murray, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, this year he does have four rushing touchdowns as well. He is a very quick quarterback who can run the ball pretty well. Uh, he's a fast guy, a very fast guy. So Texas defense is definitely going to have to watch out for that. I'm going to talk about that later. So Kyler Murray... Obviously makes it very difficult on every defense that he plays. Uh, he's going to throw it over you or he's going to run past you. So you can't let him get in the open because he'll run really, really, really fast and far away. And you can't let him throw it because he's got a pretty dang good arm. And that's why he's going to be in the MLB one day because he's got a pretty good arm. So, yeah, Murray, that's going to be a big test for Texas. And then Sam Ellinger. Sam Ellinger's been improving. He's been more patient this year. Uh, with throwing the ball, he hasn't been running as much. He's still been running. He's a big guy, so he's a slow but big guy. So he can break tackles and stuff. He can run over people and all the fun stuff. But he's definitely been improving, and he played really well in this game last year. I think he had over 100 rushing yards. 
Uh, he had a pretty good game overall. Led the rally, but was not able to complete it. He did hit his head and had a concussion or something. But that's. I think this is a big game for him to test him again. So he's going to have to continue what he's don't, doing. He's. I think he's up to sixth on the record list for Texas for most uh, passes without an interception. He's only thrown two interceptions this year. Those were both in the first game of the se season at Maryland. So obviously Texas, uh, Sam Ellinger, improving on the offense, which is definitely big for the team to show that they are able to score and that they are able to keep the ball in possession and not turn the ball over. Yeah, moving on to the defenses. I think this is going to be a big game for both defenses. The defense for Oklahoma, it's it's not been great, honestly. Uh, Florida Atlantic, uh, UCLA, they only allowed 14 to Florida Atlantic, 21 to UCLA. Then Iowa State, they allowed 27 points, and they could not take down Hakeem Butler. Uh, Army, they're never going to see that offense again, so I'm not worried about that. But Baylor, they gave up 33, and they – They've really been struggling a little bit. They allowed, I think, what was it? I, I said it in my last video, the Big 12 recap. I think it was like 450 yards or something, but they've allowed a lot. Charlie Brewer was able to throw 400 yards over him, so Oklahoma's defense really has to step up against this improving Texas offense, um, especially the air game. The run game for Texas has been inconsistent. It hasn't been super strong, so I think if Oklahoma can force some turnovers, that's going to be big for them. And then the same thing for Texas. Texas defense has to force turnovers. If they cannot force turnovers, they're done. They're they're done. Uh, obviously, they have to hold Oklahoma, make sure they don't score, holding the least amount of points. But if they can't force turnovers, that's going to be bad for them. So they need to force Murray to be uncomfortable, throw interceptions, uh, t just force turnovers. That's going to be a big deal for Texas defense if they can force some turnovers, and that could end up changing the game. And then obviously Spy and Kyler Murray put someone that says, "Hey, you're not going anywhere. Uh, so you gotta, you can't have a wide open field because Kyler Murray will take it and he will crush you with it. So you gotta obviously watch Kyler Murray. And then for Oklahoma's defense, they have to make Ellinger uncomfortable. They have to make him move around. They have to make him uncomfortable. Make him throw it away. Make him make some dumb mistake." Uh, throw an interception, uh, fumble the ball, get sacked. They have to force him to be uncomfortable. They have to crowd him. They have to force him out of the pocket, force him to run around. So if they can do that, I think that's big for them. Uh, the defensive backs are going to have to have to contain two big receivers. You got Colin Johnson, who Ellinger throws a lot of lobs to, and then you got little Jordan Humphrey, who's been having a great season. If Oklahoma can shut those two guys down, honestly – they'll win this game. But if they allow Colin Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey to be open or just to get any chance at a catch, it could be a long day for them. They they can't allow Colin Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey to have a bunch of receptions for a bunch of yards. Those are two great defenders. Um, and then OU, or uh, I just said OU, but um, for Texas's defense, I think they're going to have to keep an eye on Marquise Brown. He's been having a great season, and – Man, he's he's a great receiver. So if Texas can figure out a way to stop him from getting open, from him breaking out loose, uh, if they can shut down him. I think they got a good shot. So that'll be a definite test for them. And then another another bad thing for Oklahoma is they did lose Rodney Anderson. He was having a pretty he had a pretty good year last year. Uh, last year in this game, he had ten rushes for forty eight yards and touchdown. And then Trey Sermon, the current running back, had twenty rushes for ninety six yards. Uh, zero touchdowns so obviously I think Texas their run defense has been pretty good I think if they can force Oklahoma to only throw that will be good for them because they'll know the run isn't coming so but you obviously the you have a better run defense so you want them to run I don't think Oklahoma will run it as much but it will be it'll be interesting and then obviously another thing for the Texas defense is to as I said, turnovers, but also sacks and tackles for losses. If they can Murray, get Murray to run um, sideline to sideline instead of goal line to goal line, and they can maybe trip him up or stop him for a loss or even just a zero or one-yard gain, that's a big deal because he's a fast guy. If he's to get past that, he's gone or he's getting 20 yards. So I think Texas is going to have to do a really good job at that, at that to contain Kyler Murray. They're going to have to – 
stop him behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage. They can't let him get into the open, as I've said. And even with the running backs, the Trey Sermon, if he tries to run, they got to stop him. They can't allow him to average seven yards a rush, whatever. I think they got to keep everything under five yards a rush. But, you know, they it's a big deal for them. So, obviously, this will be a very intense game. Two of the biggest rivals in college football, uh, Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, you got an improving Texas versus an Oklahoma team who's looking to get back to the playoff and compete for another national championship. And you got Texas who's looking to make their statement and say they are back. So, man, it will definitely be an interesting game. And my prediction, here we go. So, if you look at the last five years from, what is it, 2013 to 2017, last five games, it's been close. Texas has really played them tough. But if you go back to the last time it was this big of a deal and it mattered this much, Oklahoma's really blown them out. If you look at this year, Oklahoma, they haven't had as strong of a schedule, but they've blown out all their opponents. They've destroyed them. They've, their offense has run all over them. But they have shown some flaws. And Texas, obviously, the devastating loss to Maryland, uh, the embarrassing win over Tulsa, and the last three wins have been kind of statement wins. I think this could be one of the best Texas OU games of all time. I think this could be better than 2008. This could be one of the best games we ever see. I think it could be right of the high scoring. It could come down to the defenses like it did last year. So, with that being said, I honestly, I have not ever believed Texas team since I've been into this rivalry, been a big deal and stuff. It's been rough. I've never thought that Texas has had a chance. Last year, I kind of thought they had a chance, but then again, I was like, oh man, that's still a good team. But this year, I think they legitimately have a shot. I think they're going to come into this game with a lot of intensity. With a, they're going to come out of the, they're going to come out, come out of that tunnel with a lot of just attack, attack, attack. Honestly, I think they go up early. I think they go up maybe by two touchdowns and they kind of shock Oklahoma and say, "Hey, wake up!" I think the first half Texas leads by maybe ten or something, seven or ten, and Oklahoma second half they come out and they say, "Hey, we understand this now. You guys are for real." I think they bring it back. I think they take the lead at one point. I think they keep it a close game. I think it'll be a back and forth game, third, late third, early fourth. I think I don't think it's going to be a super high scoring game. I don't think it's going to be a low scoring game. I think it'll be somewhere in the twenties, thirties. But last year I didn't make a prediction because I was like Oklahoma's going to win. I don't want to admit it, but this year I honestly think I think it could happen. I believe in this Texas team. I think if they can they can play as well as they played the last three weeks, I think they can knock off Oklahoma. Oklahoma hasn't seen a team this good yet, and it could be a big test for them. And I think that that defense, if they can hold up to their end like they did last year in this game where they were able to – they did allow a lot of yards. But when it mattered, when they got to the red zone or they started to cross into Texas territory on third downs and stuff, they were able to make those stops. If they can do that again this year, they got another shot, and the offense has improved since last year. So, man, um, final prediction. I think Texas takes it. I think they do. I think they take this thing 35-31, to 31, edging out Oklahoma, giving them their first loss of the season, and Texas is officially back. Yeah. I'm going to get a lot of hate comments for that prediction. A lot of hate comments for that prediction, but man, I really do believe in this Texas team. This is one of the best. This is one of the best teams I've seen since Colt McCoy. Honestly, it really is. The defense is outstanding. They played great this year. If they can force turnovers, if they can stop them on third down, stop them in the red zone, like they did last year. Because last year, remember that offense was pretty explosive, averaging like forty-five points a game. They only allowed them twenty-nine. And this year, I could see it happening again, and the offense from this year is better, so I would not be surprised. I I think Texas could take it. So, call me crazy, call me stupid, whatever you want. Um, I'll take the hate comments. Uh, I could obviously, I could see a way that Oklahoma wins easily. Uh, they're they're a pretty good team. They have an explosive offense. Uh, they could expose Texas. They could win by 15, 20, a lot of points. So I could see other ways. I wouldn't be surprised if Oklahoma won. So obviously, this pick wasn't just because. I, I could see. I could see both sides of it, but you get my point. Um, thank you for watching this video. 
hook em horns. Uh, watch my power rankings from last week right here. Watch another one of my videos right here. And if you would like to subscribe, click on my face. Click on it. Yeah. Click on it. Thank you for watching.